So I've been asked to look at this battery, which apparently when it's charging it says it's charged, but when you push this battery test thing it says, nope, not charged. So we'll pull it apart and see what we're dealing with inside. It could be one bad cell, it could be that all the cells are bad, it could be it's just so imbalanced it doesn't know what to do. But in fact when it's charging it says it's fully charged and then it's not. It's probably a really high internal resistance of one of the cells, so the voltage just jumps up because it's got no loading on it. That's my guess. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Looks like maybe four screws. There's security tools. Not a problem. This battery, by the way, is actually for a strapping machine. Apparently it's three amp hours. So my guess it's got five cells in it. It's rated 18 volts. Obviously it's not going to be 18 volts. It's lithium iron, apparently. So 2.7 nominal times five. It's 15, five times seven is something. 35, so it's probably 18.5 volts, not 18. So that's my guess. Anyway, now when dealing with batteries, you have to be careful you don't short things out because even a faulty battery pack can still have cells which are fully charged and you could very easily make a mistake and stuff something up and short things out or maybe catch fire to things, whatever it may be. Do keep in mind that even a faulty pack can be dangerous to work on, so just keep your wits about you when you're working on things like this. I don't miss the battery packs much. I mean I have done some but not many. It's not something I normally be working on but I got asked and I said yeah sure I'll take a look. How hard could it be? It's all conformally coated in there. That's nice. There's a button. The battery test button. So obviously there's all the BMS stuff and charging circuitry and things like that. So there's actually a little microcontroller thing in there. It's probably doing the flashing honey all that stuff. Can we get to see numbers on these chips? I could almost see it before. Can't quite make it out. That's a MOSFET, International Rectifier. Okay. Can't see what that is. So, battery cells underneath it. Let's try and get the pack out of the casing. It might just fall out. It does. There we go. Oh, it's not five, it's ten. It's ten cells. So it's got ten, fifty hundred cells. So these are fifty hundred milliamp hours. Instead of using three hundred milliamp hour cells. So you could actually put in half as many cells and have the same capacity, but when you've got more cells in parallel, we've got a higher current handling capacity. So I need to repair it in a way which fills with ten cells if I have to replace all of them. Because it has definitely got two cells in parallel, these two in parallel, those two there are in parallel. Those are in parallel, those are in parallel, and those are in parallel. It's effectively a five cell pack, but it's got in paralleled up so that it has more current handling capacity. It's probably also because these cells are cheaper. These are likely very cheap cells compared to the 3000s. So they've probably done that purely for a costing perspective, because they're much cheaper cells if you use the lower capacity one. So I was just looking at the connections here, and you can see these two outer ones are very, very dirty. Or have they been arcing? I wonder if I can pull them out and have a look. Well, yes, they can be lifted out. Obviously, don't touch them against the other terminals because that could be nasty. Which means I can actually get in there and try and give them a bit of a clean and see what's going on there. But I think it's just dirt. It looks like it's just dust in there. But yeah, it's just full of grime, so I'll clean all that out as well. That will definitely help it. So I've just got my battery tester here. Let's turn this thing on. Now, unfortunately, I don't know if you can be able to see the screen or not. Maybe I can. I don't know. It's always a problem trying to get this thing to be visible. <laughs> I really need to put lots of rubber feet or something. I might have to just read out to you what it's doing. I'll try and get it in shot if I can. What this does is it'll measure the voltage of the cells and also tell me the internal resistance. So if all goes well, and see what we're getting across each pair of cells. So stick one there, stick one there. What do we get? 4.06 volts, 9.35 milliohms. Fortunately, you guys can't see that. Kind of maybe get it there. There we go. All right. Um, next pair, 4.08 volts, 9.59. Next pair, 9.63 and 4.05 volts. Next pair, oh, 3.18. There we go. And 17 milliohms. There we go. That's the bad pair. Next ones, 4.06 and 9.63. So this end pair here, these two. One of those, or potentially both of those, are bad. The thing is, if you get one bad cell, it drags down the one next to it, because it will discharge into it. I could 
just try pushing a charge into that pair of batteries and see what happens, see if it will come right. I mean, sometimes that's all it is, is you get a weak battery which just goes out of sync and one's lagging behind, it always lags behind, so it gradually ends up in a state where it's bad. And because it's in a pair, they're both going to get dragged down. Sometimes recharging will recover it, sometimes it won't. I'm going to try recharging it and see what happens. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my power supply up to do something quite low, like 3.3 volts. That's still higher than the cell. So I've clipped onto this junction, which is the negative end of that one. And you need to clip onto this junction, which is the positive end of that one. So that should then join it up, like so. And I've got a current limit set of 1 amp. And we'll just turn the power on and see what happens. That's doing 700 milliamps and dropping 600 milliamps now. Yeah, I might even show you. Here. Yeah. That's what it's doing. So it's definitely taking some power. Let's increase the voltage a little bit. 3.5 volts is going to max out the current, 1 amp. That should be fine. It's going to cost two cells, so it's like 0.3C effectively. What I might do is get my thermal camera out and check for any hot spots on the batteries to see if there's any issues with them. Because if a battery is bad and, and having an internal failure, that will get warm at 1 amp. So let me just get that out. Well, thermal camera so far says nothing is showing up. It's looking good and we do get reflections off these things so you may see some bits which look a bit weird but it's just reflections because it's got the metal on the end there so I'm looking at the battery bodies uh, to get the reflections off it there's nothing there showing up as being a problem so at least not yet so the cell isn't like completely shorter or anything like that and um, the current's dropping down now it's now half an amp so it looks like it's actually working so I might just keep an eye on this a little while let it charge up some more and we'll see if it comes right or not. So now I've got a little bit of power into the battery. I've just cranked it up a little bit. I'm now doing one and a half amps. So it's like effectively 0.5C because it's going to cost both batteries. And I've actually set the voltage to four volts. So it'll come up to four volts and it'll stabilize there, which isn't quite fully charged. 4.2-ish is fully charged. So the other batteries are 4.06. So basically what I'm trying to do is bring this one up to the same voltage as the other cells. Once they're all the same, then what I might do is stop there and look to discharge the entire pack as one pack. Right? So across the whole pack and use my DC electronic load, load test it and see what capacity it's got as far as current handling capacity based on this cell being charged up. So I'll do that, I think, then I'll fully recharge it again across the whole pack and see if it still balances. I don't have the charger for it, unfortunately. I wish I had the charger because I'll just plug in the charger and test it after it's actually had a charge. I mean, this would take, in theory, two hours from a flat battery. I mean, these batteries are basically flat. It'll take a while. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it and see what happens. But, but is it flat because of a bad cell? Or is it just because it's weak and it's gradually just gone out of whack so much? The other ones are really good. The other ones seem to be really well matched. I mean, they're all within, you know, 02 0 0.02 volts to each other, I think it was, something like that. So those were really good. And internal resistance is also really good. 9.6 or something, wasn't it, across all of them? 5.6 or something, across all of them, around that sort of region. The internal resistance changes with charge capacity as well, so the higher capacity, the lower internal resistances as well. Higher the energy stored in the battery, the lower the internal resistances. So that's something to consider as well. So it's already saying 4 volts now, so now the current should start coming down. That cut awfully quickly, but then the internal resistance was quite high. We'll see once it's actually had a chance to absorb power and sit there. I mean, in theory, it should take 2 hours. 3.2 volts is not quite completely flat. I mean, like 2.9, 2.8 is like dead flat. Shouldn't go below that, really should stay about 3 volts. 3.2 is not quite dead flat, so we call that probably 10%. Maybe call it 10% capacity. So we've got to shove 90% capacity back into the battery. But then we're not actually doing the top, so we're probably only going up to say 90 capacity anyway. So probably putting 80% capacity in, let's call it an hour and a half or so to fully charge it. But the fact that voltage has already come up that much is a little bit surprising. I would have expected it to be a little bit slower to come up. Well, I've charged it set up now, so it's behaving better. It's not fully charged, it's, it's really close, so it's within a 45%. And I push the button, it's still flashing that light. So, as far as the battery is concerned, it's still an a, a bad battery. Apparently, sometimes you can put these things back on the charger, and they will actually come back to life, it resets it. So I'm just going to go back to them as it is, and say, give it a go. If it works, great. If it doesn't, uh, new battery time. But I can actually get these batteries quite cheaply on AliExpress. I might even just buy one for them and, and bill them for it. It might just be the easiest way of doing it, but yeah. Unless I can figure out how to program that microcontroller. I mean, I don't think anyone's ever delved into that. Maybe there's a way of doing a reset. I mean, you've got these four pads over here. Do they mean something? The thing is, I don't really want to go around like trying to 
short pads out and stuff like that in case it, like it probably has a reset on it. It may be a case of disconnecting the batteries will force it to reset. I don't know. Um, or it could completely screw it up. I've got no idea. But it seems to be it's programmed, which I'm guessing what those pads are for. That's probably a programming header. Anyway. Yeah. I suppose it wouldn't be complete unless I actually did a voltage chest. Those two outer terminals, I've realised now, are actually the, the power terminals. So I'm surprised those ones are really dirty. Anyway. 20.2 volts. Which is fine. That will definitely charge. Let's just see if it comes right when they... Um, I plug into the charger, I mean right now it isn't. So let's probe around because so I was thinking I'm still getting this issue with the flashing light, okay. Um, also I should mention the cell here when I've been charging up, that's not equal voltage to all the others. It's still got an internal resistance of 16 milliohms. So that's four, uh, six, seven milliohms more than the other cells, almost twice as much. So it's definitely weak. Now I was thinking, okay, I've got the flashing light on this board, so even if I replace that battery or whichever one of those two cells is weak and restore the battery pack. Um, I still got the flashing light so it's not working. And you can actually buy replacement boards for these things, so they're obviously aftermarket, not original. There's going to be some compromises there I expect. I was looking at the pinouts of those things, okay, let's just probe the pinouts on this. And that one there is zero volts there on that pad, that tab there, and this end over here is the 20 volts output, okay. So we've got 4 volts there, 8 volts there, 12 volts there, 16 volts here, right, as you'd expect. And those also transfer onto the board here. So we'll do, there's 20 volts there, it's the output. We've got 16 volts there, 12 volts there, 8 volts there, um, where's the 4 volts? The 4 volts isn't there. Why is there no 4 volts there? That doesn't make sense. So you got this metal tab that comes across, it's just there. That and that are connected. But it seems that between here and the tab of the battery itself, which is just there, um, there seems to be no connection. I think that requires some digging over here. See what's going on. Is there a bit of circuitry? Is there a thermal fuse in there or something like that? I don't know, but right now it seems to be the 4 volt supply is missing. Maybe that's why the pack is gone. So I was going to start digging at this and I started getting onto it the supplies a little bit. I thought, is that moving? It is, look. The tab's not sold anymore. Could that be why it's flashing? Can I fix it after all? Let's dig that back and fix that. So I've dug that back and the strippers are sitting there. I'm going to solder that. I could have either weld it or solder it, I'm going to solder it. So I'm going to use a lot of heat in a short time to try and do this. Let's try and get it overlapping. So it's got a bit of give there. And obviously this is safe to do because I'm only soldering one terminal of the battery. It's not connected to anything so it's floating. Anyway, let's just do this nice and quick and try and avoid putting heat into anything which you don't want to put heat into. We only want it on the tabs. I don't actually get into the batteries, you see. Which is why I'm using a really high heat. Right. Solder blob. This here, the button still makes it flash. Still flashes. Damn it. <laughs> I was hoping that would fix it. Let's check voltage. We should have a voltage here now. Full's going well. 4 volts, there we go, we've now got that. Alright, let's double check, so we've got 4, 8, 12. Has that been flaky or is this my probing? Probably was my probing. It's possible one's broken, it's been dropped and it's maybe got other ones going, that seemed okay. And then we've got the 20 here, yeah, that's all good. So, and obviously the main output is there. The main output is always going to be there because it's passing through all the batteries. So you've got the 0 volt and a 20 volt and a 20 volt connection, 18 volt each end, so it would have always been there, but the circuitry is obviously checking for all the bits being there. Anyway, that's connected now, but it's still flashing. Maybe that'll come right. Maybe it won't. Hmm. 
So what I'm doing right now is I've hooked up my power supply directly to the output and I'm shoving in 21 volts at 2 amps just to give it a little bit of like a charge in case it tricks this to start working or something. So far, still flashing red. Mm. There, is po there is probably a way of recovering this, I just don't know how. But the fact you can buy aftermarket boards for these to replace them means there's a good chance nobody else knows how to recover them either apart from the factory. It could be the microcontroller's program so that once it fails that's it, it just locks it out and that's the end of it, even if you restore the fault. Yeah, that's what the cat thinks too. Cat scan says nah, no good. Actually whilst it's doing this I'll demonstrate something. This is what happens when you've got a battery with a high internal resistance. Now if you don't actually understand internal resistance stuff, not many people do I suppose, maybe not been explained to you or not exposed to it. A high internal resistance means a battery cannot deliver or absorb power. Same thing for capacitors, if you get low ESL capacitors, it means they can absorb and discharge power more effectively because it's got a lower resistance. Now, battery here, they've got 21 volts going in, charge at 4.16. These ones are all good, right? 4.15, these are good batteries. 4.15, good battery. We go to the end one here because this is also another good battery, 4.15, and the battery which has a high ESR, 4.25. This is what happens because the ESR is high, it doesn't absorb the power, and the voltage will just float up because it's not being absorbed by the battery. It's like going into a resistor, right? A resistor works the same way, it limits current, and because the current can't go into the battery, the voltage will come up. And if the ESR is low, then you get more voltage sinking into the battery. And the other thing is when it's discharging, same thing, when it's actually underloading the power tool it's being used in, the low ESR cells, they'll be able to deliver more current. Whereas once you've got a high ESR, because it's got a resistance, it will deliver less current. Now because there's resistance on this pair of cells is almost double the other ones, that pair of cells can deliver half as much current as the other cells can. So these two are always going to be struggling. They will dip first, they'll drop voltage first, and when you charge it, it'll come up fastest as well. So you won't never fully charge, and they'll always drop under load. So that's why you get weak cells on packs, and it takes the whole pack down. The voltage is still 21 volts, it's dropped down to 2 point, well, 1.2 amps going in now. So 4.16, 4.15, 4.16, 4.26, which is really dodgy, don't want to go any more than that, and 4.15. So if I turn off the charging, and give it some time to settle, we will see. Now, I can actually measure the output directly. 20.7. Tuck those back in again for something horrible happens. And it's going to have a bit of relaxation time. It will be dropping down slowly. And there you go, see it's dropping slightly there. So 4.12, which is fine. 4.11. 4.12. 4.13. 4.14. That will drop more and 4.11. So this cell which has had the highest voltage, it had 4.26 on it before, right? This one has got the high ESR, and it will drop more rapidly as well. See how it's dropping down quite quickly. I'll stick on the M1. See it's dropping slower. See that? Massive difference in how quickly it drops as well. Now as it gets closer to the correct settled voltage it will gradually slow down, but you can see it's still dropping slower. That's what the ESR does for them. Yeah, that's why a weak battery is no good for the entire pack. If you can, you swap that one out.